Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Tuesday, December 14th. It's 6.50 as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run your player a little quicker. 1.25 or even 1.5x will work best for you. Um, taking a quick look at futures. Uh, Bitcoin up 2%, uh, trying to restabilize. Not, not a lot going on in the equity and commodity space. I've got large caps down 0.25%, NASDAQ down 0.7%, and small caps basically flat. Not a lot happening on the macro front. We've got the uh, NFIB Small Business Confidence Index, and then uh, not much happening on the earnings front either. We do have Lennar uh, and Adobe tomorrow. We've got uh, FedEx on Thursday, that'll be closely watched. But really the big thing now is we've got uh, Jay Powell tomorrow at 2 p.m. with the uh, policy announcement. And then of course the presser at 2.30. So all that's kind of uh, taking center stage, taking all the oxygen out of the room as it were. And I don't know if you sensed it, but I, I, just, I just sense this market being a, a little skittish right here right now ahead of the fed that's normal i think uh, uh we know a policy shift is coming i think that puts even more uh trepidation in the market yesterday we had a lot of reversals out of the gate we had a a, a big surge and then reversals uh, uh uh, across quite a number of names, dramatic reversals in some cases. And so, you know, I think, you know, as we listen to the market, I think you got to, at certain junctures, know when to mash the pedal to the floor and step on the gas. You got to know times in the market to throw it in reverse. And then you you have times in the market where you're just not sure. And I think that's kind of where we're at. I mean, I think the whole market knows we're going to have a policy shift. We're going from massive accommodation to accelerated withdrawal of that liquidity. And, you know, what is that going to mean exactly now i've hypothesized and shared with you i think it's death to the ponzi sector and the bubble sector as you know there's just this mass of it didn't really matter what you were in or whatever it was going up now i think things are going to be a lot more selective we know that our our giant mega names the apple microsoft Oh my gosh, Facebook, Amazon, all the all the fat man names are 40% of the market. Now, uh, it's good cuz they have they have uh, tremendous earnings support and pricing power. I mean, Apple, the price is the price. If you don't want one, you don't get one, but it's not a commodity. Uh, same thing with with Microsoft uh, and Amazon. You know, these companies just have durable, durable earnings. So from that standpoint, it's good. There'll be a lot of stabilization at the top of the indexes. But as you'll see in just a minute, you know, the real market, the the market underneath the, the index level is getting, I'm not going to say decimated, but there's been a major correction going on underneath the surface, so we need to be uh, aware of that. And it just a lot of it depends on on where you are at in the market as to what your, you know, they say all politics is local, and it's the same thing with with trading and investing. Uh, you could be long certain things right now and be doing fine, or you could be short some things and be doing really really well. I mean, if you took a short on Peloton, <clears throat> you know, life is good as it goes from 
160 back to 35 or whatever it is. So it kind of depends on where you're at. So let's let's get into it a little bit and maybe we can crystallize at least the stuff that we look at almost every day. We talked about VIX. Uh, we came up, we gapped down last week, finished at the lows, and then yesterday we bounced up a little bit. Uh, I've got a, a running hypothesis out there that uh, this gap is going to fill sooner rather than later. You know, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, after after Powell, don't forget we've got a quadruple witching on Friday where we've got, you know, December, you know, all the different uh, option flavors expiring. So that's going to be another source of potential volatility. And I could definitely envision, you know, a flash move up here to scare everybody and then uh, some type of a rally into the end of the year as, as people try to, uh, you know, kind of dress up their portfolios, get readjusted, et cetera, heading in to the new year. So I've got this, this uh, gap fully in focus. Now, we've been talking about the Brett that continues to deteriorate. We were talking about yesterday the, the percent over over the 50 on the NASDAQ was, you know, in the 24s. Now it's in the 21s. So we're right back down to almost where we were a week and a half ago when we said the whole thing has bottomed out. And this, and this speaks to stocks under the surface, right? Because this is taken into consideration, you know, all of the NASDAQ, not just, you know, the top seven to 10 names. So underneath the surface, there's been some tremendous uh, damage. And the thing to note here is it really doesn't get much worse. I mean, let's take a look at it back over the last, oh, uh, this goes back four or five years, you know, a low, a low, a low, a low, uh, pandemic, Powell saying we're going to, uh, we're on autopilot. This is where the back in the fall of 18 is when the market went down 25% in a straight line from September to January 3rd, where he did the, the Powell pivot. Even before that, we came down here to 22.5% and reversed. So from a Brett standpoint, it, it doesn't get much worse than this. Now that Unlike the oscillator, where I have supreme confidence when it gets oversold, it's going the other way. And we've we've played that to our advantage on quite a number of occasions. I'm not willing at this point, you know, a day and a half ahead of the Fed and a massive policy shift, whatever it may be, whether he says, um, uh, we're going to double it. I mean, God forbid, what if he says, uh, like the bank of Canada did just the other day, um, we changed our mind. We're stopping liquidity today. Not, there's not going to be a taper. We're stopping today. We're not doing anymore. And then we'll, we'll evaluate things for a rate increase, you know, at a later point in time. I think you'd see the biggest red bar you've seen in, in a long time. Now, what's the percentage odds of that? Very small, I think. I think they wouldn't do something that bold, but you never know. So what I'm saying is I'm not willing to, to step in right here in any kind of big way and say, okay, that's it. We're, you know, we're going higher in front of the Fed. I want to get through the Fed. I want to get through quadruple witching and take it from there i'll i'll gladly i'll gladly uh give up any kind of big gains that we have over the next three days uh for the for the sake of safety so that's that's kind of my thinking uh now i want to show you as we move into the charts 
some very interesting price action that I want to kind of drill into your head because we've seen it again and again and again and it's a it's a pattern that repeats it, you know it's repeated forever and ever and ever and I think it's one that you can really put in your playbook um, spy two hour we had this flag you know uh, we started to get this breakout and then we reversed and what do we say when we get a reversal when you go out of a trading range right breakout and then you return to the trading range where is your target your target is always the bottom of the box and so yesterday you know we had this well-defined range between 469 and 466 a three dollar range and so we we broke out then we came back and went within and then we came right down to the bottom of the box with a low of 466.25 right here and so if you're an active trader it's an opportunity to uh, recognize that and will it work every single time from now until forever no there's exceptions to every rule and a lot of times price doesn't cooperate but it uh, it happens a lot and it's I mean that's where these rules come from they happen more times than they don't so here was your fake breakout your move uh, back into the the old trading range and right to the bottom of the box where it stopped so if you're an active trader and you've got an open mind remember uh, being flexible and remember that analogy that I've used through the years as far as your trading psychology goes you're a leaf on a stream right a leaf on a stream following the currents and a leaf has no biases he's happy to float on the surface of that water whether it goes right or left whether it goes up or down so if you've got that mentality and you're sitting here you know getting long as I did as anybody would on a breakout I mean, you got to take it at face value. If you're breaking out of a range, you expect price to go higher. But when it doesn't, when you're expecting higher and you get lower, that's your reversal point. Number one, what should you be thinking? Number one, you're thinking like everybody else is thinking. I'm wrong. We just broke out and now I'm stopped out. Honor that stop. You're wrong. That's what stops are for. And then quickly, instead of cussing yourself out or cussing out the market that you got stopped out, where's the next opportunity? What's the setup? The setup is fake breakout, back into the range, default target is the bottom of the box, get short with a stop just above switch gears your leaf on a stream we're heading lower and then you turned a event where you were pissed off or disappointed into having a very nice day and that's the essence of active trading so today uh pretty simple setup right here you're at uh, 466 right at the bottom of the box 466.25 right there you break lower you've got quite a quite a unsupported level here between 466 and 4, 464 give or take at the top of this gap and then you got the five dollar gap all the way down to 459 so uh, I mean 
uh, some really important lines there at 466. I mean, you don't want to really get this ball rolling downhill, but like I said, we've got a catalyst. We've got a catalyst in front of us. And so, uh, you know, you drop, you drop below 466. I see us coming down to 464 relatively quickly to, uh, test the top of this gap and just kind of thinking ahead to tomorrow. Maybe, maybe we come down today, touch the top of this gap and then just oscillate, right? Oscillate in front of Powell, you know, keep it right. Keep everybody on the edge of their seats because everybody's got this chart as well. And then he makes the announcement. If it's an, oh my God, knee jerk moment, you know, giant red bar, come down here, terrify everybody, go up and fill that gap and then bounce it from there. So that's just one hypothesis. So uh, let, let's step it up here. Uh, Q's, same idea, but there wasn't really the breakout. We just ran into resistance here at 398 and then brought it back. We're, you know, technically a little bit inside that gap. I would just use 392 today as your pivot. If it holds that and bounce, you can be long. But below 392, you've got, uh, you've got the balance of the gap to fill. And here you got the detail of it. And we already know uh, just from the uh, pre-market futures action, we're down 0.75%. So we're going to open somewhere down in here with a gap above. Just remember on the open, they may, you know, run it up real quick to fill that gap. And then if things stay weak, you know, roll it back over. So we'll, you know, you have to play that by ear on the opening. Uh, IWM, two hour, I mean, just soggy trading down a percent and a half. We've got this prior low down here at 213. Uh, I thought we were going to go there yesterday. We, we kind of had a stabilizing uh, afternoon of trade where price came back up into this 217 area. And I think that is your, uh, uh, well, actually here, 216 uh, is your pivot for today. I think if it can stay above that, then it has a chance to uh, grind higher, but just uh, technically speaking, I think that price is going to find its way back down to this 213 level to test these prior lows, and then that would kind of align with you know some some turbulence on either ahead or after Powell, where you know just you know get a quick move down here to 213 see if that low holds and then that would be a major level remember um, uh, the giant trading range the big daily trading range the the bottom of that box is 210 so if you were to break 213 then 210 would be your next big level off of the daily chart so uh, if you guys are new here, uh, certainly appreciate your time. I hope you find value in the information and the levels that I'm sharing with you. Kind of get you set up for the, the, for the day, both technically and psychologically, to take advantage of the market. Um, and then once you uh, have spent a little time with me and gain some confidence in the levels that I'm giving, you can focus all your attention on execution because that's that's really where you get paid. Knowing the levels is a necessary first step, but it's not enough. You've got to know what to do at those levels. And just like we showed on those reversals, have the confidence and the awareness to know that, for instance, when you go back into a range, you got to get, you know, abandon your first idea and get with the next opportunity. So uh, hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell and the like button is always nice and you'll get my YouTube content. And if you want to go the extra mile, jump over in the show notes. There's a link where you can register for all my content on the website 
and that way you'll get a nice neat email morning to morning noon or night with any observations that I have uh, on the markets during the day or or after hours uh, and of course longtime listeners thank you so much for being here with me I appreciate that so let's let's jump into fat man uh, kind of the same situation uh, wasn't quite as dramatic on Facebook as some of the others but we had a really big opening bar um, we started here below uh, 330 and if you were watching your five minute chart you had uh, quite a number of buy opportunities uh, you had a you had a move here above 330 that was a buy above uh, 334 was a buy a move into the gap was a buy a move out of the gap was a buy and then it hit the wall here at 340 and you had uh, two candles well on the 60 minute chart you had uh, two reach up touches to this 340 341 area where you saw that there were responsive sellers at that level when you have the tails on the top of a candle that means you know the buyers were able to push it up to a certain level and then the sellers took over and that's what creates these uh, wicks on top of the candles so if you had been long out of the gate and you know a couple hours into trading you kind of got the feeling that uh, uh, 340 was either it for the day or was going to pose a more significant type of a resistance. And so if you had gotten long at lower levels, that certainly would have been a hint to scrape off that win and then reset. And then, <clears throat> you know, if you were a sharpshooter, you could have gone short against the high right you can always do that with a stop just above or you could have said you know what i'm staying bullish but i got to get the breakout for my signal and if you were in that camp of thinking higher not lower then then you just had no trade in the afternoon because it it ended up rolling rolling lower so today i think you're 334 is your clear pivot uh, right here if it can hold that it'll have an opportunity to grind higher but below that you've got uh, these well-established levels down here at uh, uh, 331 down here at 327 326 is a level and then you know you certainly don't want to break this prior low uh, or else or else that would um, most likely bring in more sellers and then drive it down and don't forget we've got an open gap down below Apple saw its first day of real weakness and like since way back here in early December we had a <clears throat> a opening high a little doji bar got up to 182 and hit the wall and reversed with the rest of the market and slid all the way back to 176 so from that standpoint what have we done over the last few days we had a consolidation flag here between 174 and 176 consolidating this move higher and then we had a breakout and now we've had a back test so breakout from 176 run up to 182 back to 176 uh, you know common technical action what you don't want to see today is a big move back down below 176 why that will make that would make this move look like a false breakout which it would be as it moves below 176 and I think if you you know the last chance to save it as it were would be 174 you know I could see it coming back to 174 
and stabilize along this large volume over price bar, this area of cons uh, prior consolidation, but uh, you don't want it to see price go below 174 or else I would expect it to, you know, roll down here and then, you know, challenge this uh, prior gap way down in the upper 160s. Uh, Tesla, I wanted to show you the daily chart and we'll flip quickly over to the, the 60 minute chart. We had uh, this more or less parabolic move from the mid 750s. I mean, literally added $500 up to $1,250 in, uh, in a heartbeat. And then we came back down to this 1000 level. And, and uh, you can see here in the green, that is where the 50 EMA comes in. So we've, we went up to 1250. We came back to a thousand, which held over this period of time. We got a bounce and now we have rolled back over and are trading both under a thousand and under the 50 EMA. Remember our kind of rules of thumb, nothing really good happens under the 50. So in my mind on a, on the, on the daily chart, I think for Tesla to get back in gear or at least stop the bleeding, you got to recover the 50 at uh, this 1000 level. And, you know, given this gap here, given how close we are, given, you know, kind of the state of the market, I'd be surprised if this gap didn't fill since we're so close. You can see right here that we had a reach down touch with this candle uh, last week. Came right down to 950 and tagged the top of the gap. We had that again yesterday. Came down, tagged the top of the gap. Obviously, price knows exactly where that gap is. So if you were to see a move below 950, Let's go back and look at the uh, 60 minute chart to get the blow up. You know, we've got the gap right here. I don't probably have it exactly perfect. I would just call the top of the gap at 950. You get a, you get a move below 950. I think you're going to come down to 910 pretty quickly to uh, fill that gap. And then uh, price will have to decide if, if that's it or if it wants to plumb lower levels. I have dropped in a down channel with a midpoint line just for visual reference. You can see that this uh, uh, thousand level here, actually it's at, at 1010, uh, is where uh, a large amount of volume over price activity has been you know, in this range here, this value range, and that's going to be a big barrier on the way back up because you can view all this as, as resistance and you can see that that heavy resistance starts about 1010. So, I mean, just from a technical standpoint, you know, top of the channel, bottom of the channel would put price down at, uh, uh, a little south of 900 and remember we have gone through that exercise of an a b c move puts price down on a measured move basis at about 880 as a target there on uh, tesla uh, microsoft 60 minute chart uh, early in the day had A, a a big breakout try early in the morning like a lot of the other stocks and then they reversed it brought it back to this range and then finished on a on a uh, sour note uh, final bar of the day dropping down uh, I've dropped in an uptrend line and remember our 
really our line of demarcation is this 338 level. Why? Because of all these uh, reactions along this line. So what I would say for today, especially if you're long, you got to hold 338. You just, I mean, you just got to, all this here should be support now, now that we've broken out. And if we were to come back below 338, then of course, all this trading activity would be a fake breakout. And then I, I'd expect a fast move from 338 down to 330, which really was the prior trading range. You know, if I made a, a block out of all this trading, we had a, we had a, um, uh, a bear trap where we broke below. And then once we came back up, the goal, the uh, target was the top of the box at 338. We broke out there. And so if we come back in, this would have been a bull trap where we thought there was a breakout. Well, there was a breakout and then they faded it. So that would be a bull trap and then a bear trap and then back into the trading range between 330 and uh, 338. Uh, Amazon just, I mean, leaking lower. I think your pivot today is 3380. Um, I think it would make technical sense for this to just, you know, come down to 3340 and then make a decision. Test the prior low. See if that holds. If not, then you've got a, a, um, a, B, C move much lower as, uh, you know, this prior low would be broken. And I think from my, uh, just my note here, I'd have to back up the chart a little bit, but you'd probably be looking at at least a hundred dollars lower down towards 3240 if, uh, 3340 were to break. So, uh, that's what I'm thinking there. So I think the big test will be on the, uh, back test of this prior low. Uh, Google, uh, not doing a whole lot. Well, it was down a, uh, down a percent and a half. Uh, we reached resistance here at 29.80 and have, you know, made a series of uh, lower highs and lower lows. We've got a pivot here at 29.20. I think we will probably come down and test the top of this gap at 2,900. That could happen today. It could happen on, uh, you know, the Powell announcement. And with this gap here, I think what you've got to keep in mind, uh, I doubt that would fill today. But tomorrow, if there's some kind of, you know, turbulence after Powell and you lose this 2,900, I think it would come down here to uh, 2860, like in a flash. That and you would see that across the board. It's not going to be, it's not going to be just Google. It's going to be Amazon testing the lows. It's going to be IWM testing the lows. It's going to be Microsoft filling the gap, moving back into the range. You know, so all this stuff is going to happen at once. Just have your alarm set and be focused on the things that you want to trade. If anything, maybe you just want to just let it sit and settle out and not get trapped in anything. But I think uh, with this gap here yet to fill, I think it has to be uh, part of your focus on, on uh, Google. Netflix. Uh, we are back down towards testing the prior lows yesterday. We pointed out that we, we do have positive divergence in place. Why? We've got a low here with a low in momentum, a low in RSI. Now we are essentially back at the same point in price, but momentum is much higher and RSI is higher. So 
I think the test will come right here uh, at this low uh, 596 or whatever it is. I wanted to show you the daily chart as well. And uh, we're, you know, right here at this level. I think if you break, you know, if we get a, a daily close below this 600 level, you know, in the in the 590 range, I think it's probably going to come down here and test the 200 down at, uh, what is it, 575 right here. You can see the gold EMA coming in. That's the 200 on the daily. We are already well below the uh, 8 day, 20 day, and 50 day in green. And you can also see that the faster moving averages, the 8 and the 20, are breaking below the 50. And that, you know, that's a classic bear look when you have uh, all the EMAs bearishly stacked. So the 8 day below the 20, below the 50. And, uh, you know, so those will be resistance on the way back up as well. So keep that in mind if you're uh, into trading Netflix. Here's another example as we move to the uh, semiconductor ETF. We had a gap. We had moved into that gap, but uh, really for quite a number of hours, price did not really show any inclination of wanting to fill it. Yesterday, we got the fake breakout. Then we uh, moved back into the box. Your target's always the bottom of the box. And so you got a, you know, $8 move. I mean, if you were like a leaf on a stream, if you were focused on it, if you did have your levels, if you did recognize the fake breakout, if you were flexible in your thinking to get short on that type of a move, then, you know, that's a great day. You know, when you get short at 308 or 307 and you get a unidirectional move to fill that gap and you're down here at, uh, you know, 299, you know, that's a great trading day. And if you got that, kudos to you. That's an excellent trade. So now we're right back down here at 299, which was an important level for us back here. Really simple. You can stay long against 299. If you see 299 give way, then your next target is to test this prior low down towards 292, where we were at just uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just a quick couple of charts that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, I made a point yesterday of talking about uh, the big breakout in Ford. Well, they reversed it yesterday. Now, they didn't come in and fill this box because, you know, consolidation, breakout, you don't want to come back. So, for my money, I'd much rather see it, you know, get back out of the box then fill the box, but at this point, you've got to be pretty cautious. Now, if you're a long-term investor, you know, we're at 20-year breakout highs, so yesterday's action, you know, of course, depending on where you got in, it, it makes a difference, but um, from a longer-term chart perspective, you go out to a weekly or a monthly chart, you'll see that 20 year breakout. And I think that level is at um, like 1750, if I'm not mistaken. Go back and check that on your own. But if you got a, you know, a pullback into the 50 down the road on some turbulence, that would serve as a back test of that 20 year breakout. And then that could be a point where you got a, you know, super long-term type entry. Uh, KB Home, 
fake fake breakout. I sent that out uh, right out of the gate yesterday. Looked good, and they reversed it. They brought it back. Uh, someone made mention in the in the um, uh, trading room about Toll Brothers fake breakout. So you can look across the home builder space, which is trading at all time highs. You know, if if there's turbulence or if Powell creates some turbulence and it looks like there's going to be a rising rate environment, you know, rising rates and houses usually don't go together that well. So there may be some downside opportunities in that. And then uh, we had a trade idea a few weeks ago on energy. Uh, we had pointed out this option activity. We pointed out the break into the gap on our bracket trade strategy. And yesterday we got the gap fill all the way up to 40. So mission accomplished on that. Congratulations if you were in the trade. Now you can decide, well, number one, I would close out your original trade. You know, if you got long down here on the gap entry, you're your uh, $3 to the good. And if you get a breakout here above 40, then you can stay long against that level with the confidence and knowledge, knowing that you've already got a nice trade already in the bank. And of course, ARC continues to slide. Uh, some funds were more than others. Uh, yesterday, ARC G was just down a little bit. But if you go to the flagship fund, which has a lot of Tesla in it, down almost 2%, and Web 3.0 down almost 3%. Like I said, uh, Ponzi, bubbles, high valuation, no earnings, big dreams, but nothing to show for it so far. I think those kind of stocks are going to have trouble going forward. So let's wrap it up there. Hope you got benefit from the analysis. Uh, this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.